Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to look at the best credit cards for beginners, people getting their first credit card. Now, if you are getting your first credit card or want to, you may be a college student. You might not be a college student. You might be someone who is new to the U.S. trying to get your first credit card in the United States. And in this video, we're going to cover all of those possibilities. Now, if you're a college student who is a beginner to credit cards, you are going to have the easiest time probably being approved for your first credit card of anyone we're going to talk about in this video because credit card companies like to get in on the ground floor with college students. They assume you're going to graduate, make decent money. They would like to build some loyalty with you while you are on your way there. Now, Discover, if you are a college student, may have already marketed to you. You may have already gotten some stuff in the mail from them. They are a decent place to start. I would probably tell you that instead you should start with Capital One with either their Saver One card for students or their Quicksilver card for students. The Saver One card has no annual fee. You're gonna get 3% cash back on your dining purchases, your entertainment purchases, 3% back at grocery stores, 3% back on most streaming services, 1% everywhere else. The Quicksilver card, if you don't want to think about those categories, that one's going to give you 1.5% cash back across the board on all of your purchases. The other reason I say go to Capital One first if you are a student is because they also have no foreign transaction fees. And if you are someone that is going to study abroad or maybe go abroad at some time while you are a college student, Capital One cards are a good one to have because they're not going to charge you anything extra on those purchases outside of the U.S. where many other credit card companies are going to charge you a 3% fee on international purchases. You might also try the Bank of America customized cash card for students, also no annual fee. That one's going to give you 3% cash back in a category of your choice from a list of categories that they have, things like gas, dining, online shopping, which includes an awful lot of stuff that you might buy online and other categories as well. So you choose a 3% category, you get 2% cash back on your grocery and wholesale club purchases, and then 1% back everywhere else. There is a cap on those 3% and 2% categories in terms of uh, how much spending you can do, but unless you're a big spender, you're probably not going to hit it. This one does have foreign transaction fees, so if that is something that you are thinking about, you think you might travel outside of the U.S., you would pay that extra 3% on those particular purchases. And that Discover It card for students is a fine place to start as well. No annual fee. You get 5% cash back in certain purchasing categories that change each calendar quarter. So every three months, you're going to have different categories where they are giving 5% cash back. So you kind of have to stay on top of that if you want to maximize those rewards. Everything else that you uh, purchase with the card will get you 1% cash back. At the end of the first year of having the card, they will double all those rewards that you earned in those 12 months prior. So that is a nice feature. Now, the reason I put Capital One sort of at the beginning here, if you're a student and not Discover, is while Discover does not have foreign transaction fees, in many countries, the Discover card is not going to be accepted. So if you travel outside of the U.S. and you have only the Discover card, that's the only credit card you have, you might get somewhere to try to use it and find out that they don't actually accept it. But still, if you're not going to travel outside of the U.S., Discover a fine place to start. Now, what if you are not a college student, but you are a beginner to credit cards looking for that first credit card approval? I would probably still tell you to start with Discover or Capital One. Both of those companies, the most friendly to people that don't have a credit history. The Discover It card might be the most likely to approve you without a credit history. Now, this is the Discover It card for sort of the mainstream audience, not the student version, but it is essentially the same card. No annual fee. You've got 5% cash back in those rotations rotating categories to change each calendar quarter, 1% cash back on everything else. Same uh, cash back bonus where you uh, get your rewards doubled after the end of that first year. Now, if you are worried about those foreign transaction fees and you want your card to be able to be used outside of the U.S. easily, then you might try Capital One instead because they don't have foreign transaction fees on any of their cards. So the Capital One Quicksilver, probably the place to start, probably the most likely card to be approved for without a credit history, especially if you want rewards. Capital One does offer a Capital One Platinum card that has no rewards at all and has no annual fee, and it's possible they might offer that one to you instead if you applied for the Capital One Quicksilver, but I would probably apply for the Quicksilver and see how that goes and then see if they offer me the Platinum instead of going straight to the Platinum and applying for that. You might as well try to get the rewards if you possibly can. 
Now within the last year, Chase also introduced a credit card that is specifically for people that don't have a credit history. It is called the Chase Freedom Rise, and this is something you may want to look at as well. This is a no annual fee card that gives you 1.5% cash back on all of your purchases across the board. Now, what's interesting about this card, and this is something you rarely see from a credit card company, Chase tells you that if you also have a Chase checking account that has at least $250 in it, this is going to improve your chances of being approved for the Chase Freedom Rise card. So, still not a guarantee. They're still going to look at your credit history and make sure there's not anything uh, bad in your past. But if you are new to credit and you have that checking account, they are specifically telling you this is going to improve your chances of being approved for that card. So if you want Chase instead of Capital One or Discover for whatever reason, this is a card to look at as well. This card does charge uh, 3% foreign transaction fee, so you would be charged extra if you used it outside of the United States. Other ideas if you are looking for that first credit card and you are not a college student, number one, look at local credit unions or smaller local banks that offer credit cards. Oftentimes, if you are a local customer, especially if you already have some other sort of account with them, your chances of being approved could be higher for a credit card. Also, if there is a branch nearby, it gives you the opportunity to actually go in and talk to a a person face to face and see what your chances are of being approved. Number two, you might look at store credit cards as a way in. This is not ideal, but it is the way that plenty of people start. In particular, if you could be approved for a card like the Walmart credit card or the uh, Target red card, maybe the Best Buy card, something where you would have some decent usage of that card, that would be a place to potentially break in. Now be careful of these cards because they often have very high interest rates. So just like with any credit card, you wanna make sure you're paying off your full balance each month when when you use the card and the other thing about store cards is sometimes they will have a MasterCard or Visa version that you can use anywhere. Sometimes they might approve you, but only for a card that you can use at that particular store, which can be kind of limiting. Still, if you're looking for your first credit card and you're not having luck otherwise, this might be an avenue to go down. I'm also gonna mention here the pedal credit cards, which are geared toward people that don't have a credit history. I used to be more positive about pedal, but within the last year to year and a half, I've sort of soured on them because of the fact that some of their their earliest customers found out that they got the card sort of under one understanding and then all of a sudden Pedal told them that they were going to start charging them annual fees and it felt like kind of a bait and switch so I don't trust Pedal in the way that maybe I would have at an earlier time. Now finally if you're getting no love from any of these other options for your first credit card well that's when you would go to secured credit cards and a secured credit card means you have to put down a security deposit in order to get the card so you have to put down $200, $500, whatever it is, and then you would get a credit limit of the same amount, and then you could use the card just like any other credit card, pay your bills on time and everything, and that will help you to build up your credit history and build up your credit score. And that money that you put down for the credit card, that is a refundable security deposit. So you're not paying them to get the card and then that money goes away. Eventually it's gonna come back to you as long as you pay all your bills. You're either gonna say you don't want the card anymore, and they'll give you your money back, or they might graduate you to a card that no longer needs that security deposit, and then they would just send the money back to you or maybe uh, give you a credit on your account for whatever you put down as a security deposit. If you're looking at a secured card, I would probably look at the Discover uh, secured card first because of the fact that Discover has maybe the best reputation for graduating you in a fairly short period of time. So yes, you have to put that security deposit down, but they are pretty well known if you pay all your bills on time to graduate you to the regular Discover It card in a fairly short period and give you that money back. And then finally, I want to talk to people who are new to the U.S. looking for their first credit card in the United States. The advice is not necessarily a whole lot different. Start with Discover and Capital One. See if you can be approved for one of their cards, that Chase Freedom Rise card. Again, if you wanted to establish a checking account with Chase, they've said that would improve your chances of then being approved for that credit card. And then all of the other uh, advice holds all the way down to secured credit cards if you can't be approved anywhere else. Now, I do want 
want to also mention uh, American Express has what they call a credit passport. And if you are from certain countries and have a credit history in those countries, that can be used as the basis for potential approval with American Express. So some of those countries are Canada, Mexico, uh, the UK, India, Kenya, Dominican Republic, and there are some others as well where if you have a credit history, that could improve your chances of being approved with American Express. But all of those options are out there for you regardless of who you are. It's not as hard to get your first credit card as sometimes people make it out to be, but you do have to sort of look in the right places instead of maybe going for the cards that require a longer credit history and a high credit score. And then once you use the cards responsibly and you have a little more uh, credit history under your belt, you can then go after some of those other cards that maybe aren't open to you as someone who is new to credit. Questions, comments, put them in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you're not going to leave a comment or go to the website, you might want to watch next that video right there.